Is there any bigger personality shift than Mikhail and Torna and the main game? Granted, 500 years is a pretty long time. Next up, we have Mikhail. He's another pretty solid blade overall in B tier and one of the main Tornin trio you can use during New Game Plus. Honestly, I think he's a pretty cool character also, and seeing his growth from the child who would rarely ever speak and who was always sad to basically always smiling even in the worst of situations was a nice one, and the blade he reveal was one of my favorite moments in Xenoblade 2. His combat strength is nothing to scoff at, as he can be a pretty effective tank and a decent blade overall with his evasion abilities. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Mikhail, discussing all of his strengths and weaknesses, and seeing how to use him most effectively. As always, if you enjoy my guide content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and look forward to all of my future Xenoblade content because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. So Mikhail is a clone weapon, the same as all of the other torn in blades, this time being another clone of the twin ring weapon called the Infinity Fans. I suppose it was a popular weapon to make clones of since Dromark was the only rare blade before. Regardless, his core chip cannot be changed, so the stats you see are what you get besides auto attack, which is 1454 when maxed out on trust, which is pretty solid for a tank class weapon. His critical hit rate is 15%, which isn't all that amazing, and his block rate is 20%, which is pretty meaningless for Mikhail, as is his 25% physical defense and 30% ether defense, since he is definitely evasion focused. If he does get hit, it can help out though. His stat mod is 15% agility, which is helpful for him specifically, and his cooldown is 5, which is among the best in the game. The bonus effect on his weapon is countering evaded attacks with 150% of your driver's strength stat, which is pretty worthless, but oh well. His skill tree is what really matters, so let's take a look at that now. Mikhail's first skill is Dimensional Wrinkle. This will increase his evasion by 15% at level 1 and 45% at level 5 when his affinity is at max. Yep, Mikhail has a straight up 45% evasion buff, which is always going to be beneficial and works very well when you can stack agility on someone like Morag and combine it with Foresight. You will not be getting hit ever, and that allows Mikhail to function perfectly as a tank and get all the aggro he needs since he actually has good arts and specials and a decent ability to obtain aggro. He should also be keeping it easily thanks to this, and I suppose this means he gets that spike damage all the time as meaningless as that is. All around this is definitely his best skill because being unhittable is the best aspect a tank can have. Unfortunately, his next skill isn't quite as good. Dimensional Fold will increase aggro every second. Same description at all five levels. You guys remember that Electra skill I said was useless? Same thing here, basically. Considering half your damage is added as aggro, a minor increase like this is super unimpactful when it's only in the double digits every second. It won't be contributing much to your aggro gain in the post-game at all, which is the only time you can use Mikhail. This is definitely his worst skill. Mikhail's final skill is Gravity Pinwheel. This adds a 20% chance of blowdown on the enemy when he is attacked at level 1, and this rises up to 30% at level 5, and it affects the entire party. This is actually another nice skill in a vacuum, but a bit weird for Mikhail specifically. Basically, any enemy not immune to blowdown has a 30% chance of being blown down on every attack they use on Mikhail or his allies, and this is nice because it interrupts them completely from anything they might be doing and makes them waste time having to stand up afterwards. This is definitely a nice ability for a tank to limit the enemy damage output, and blowdowns are nice effects to have in general. However, this only works if the attacks actually hit Mikhail or his allies, and if you have a ton of evasion, that's not likely to happen much since Mikhail is likely to have aggro and be evasion focused. That means you're not going to be seeing a ton of benefit out of this skill, but it can act as a decent secondary defense system should you need it or cannot afford to agility stack. It's certainly a unique skill and very good against enemies with a lot of area of effect, but it doesn't synergize super well with Mikhail's evasion. At least it's nice if he loses aggro since it does help out his party members. Pretty good skill, honestly. Mikhail might seem like he suffers from a lack of damage based on his chart, but thanks to a strong evasion, free aux core slots, and good artifacts that increase damage, he actually has more damage than most tanks, being one of the highest DPS tanks in the game from calculations and testing I did a while back. So the lack of damage on his skill tree doesn't hurt his tanking prowess that much, and he can be the evasion tank he was meant to be. Let's talk about his specials. Mikhail's level 1 special is Crow Beat. This is a single hit, ether based special of pretty decent speed. You will never guess what the damage ratio is. That's right, it's 300 at level 1, 460 at level 5, and 480 at max affinity, same as pretty much every other Torn and Blade at this point, and the average overall. There isn't much too noticeable about this one. It does have a decent every effect, but the bonus effect is just increasing aggro draw, which isn't the most impactful thing. Probably the weakest special he has overall. Mikhail's level 2 special is Crow Feather. This is another single hit ether attack, but it's ridiculously fast. It's one of the fastest special in the games for sure. 
Sadly, positive's in there because it has a below average damage ratio of 400 to level 1, 560 at level 5, and 580 at max affinity, which definitely does not help it feel useful. Still, speed can count for something, and it does have a few uses solely because of that. The bonus effect is increasing damage to launch enemies, and if you have driver combo support, it's easy to fulfill since the special is so fast. It's alright for its speed, but not amazing outside of that. Mikhail's level 3 special is Final Crow. This special also has a pretty below average damage ratio, unfortunately, of 500 at level 1, 660 at level 5, and 680 at max affinity, which is definitely unfortunate, but besides that, this special is pretty good. The speed isn't great, and it is only one hit, but it has a 50% critical hit modifier, which is nice for getting more crits, and the bonus effect is increasing damage to enemies targeting the user, which is very easy to fulfill to get a big damage boost. It even has a nice air of effect range as well, which is great for fighting multiple enemies. I just wish the damage ratio was just a little bit higher. All around, probably the best of his standard 3 specials. Mikhail's level 4 special is Ultimate Crow. This special has a pretty solid damage ratio of 1075 and a critical hit rate modifier of 40%, which is pretty nice overall for damage. It has blowdown as an effect on some of the hits of the special, but no bonus effect besides that, sadly, being one of the few level 4 specials like that. The high damage ratio is still pretty nice, though, making it probably his strongest damaging option in a lot of situations, and you can always freeze driver combos and get invincibility with this. Not that you really need it with all the evasion, but it's still an option to save allies or something. All around, it's a decent enough level 4. Mikhail cannot change his core chip, so you're just stuck with that, but for Aug's cores, we're going to boost his damage as much as possible since he does not have any added sources of damage and can benefit a lot from damage increases. Affinity Max Attack, Outdoor or Indoor Attack, and whatever enemy hunter you're fighting like Titan Hunter are the three best damage increases and can ensure he's strong. Affinity Max Evade can be an option if you are running him without Mithra, but you might also need Night Vision then. There aren't really a ton of other options you'd want for him, really. For accessories, Dauntless Boots is a great item to boost your agility to unhittable territory, especially when combined with agility mod Katana Blades with Pentagon Chips, so more I can reach huge agility numbers like 859. That may be a bit overkill with Foresight and his agility buff, and if so, you can replace this with a damage increase like the Glamorous Swimsuit. Abyss Mask is the second slot because there's with so much evasion, I'm not worried about getting hit, so the 110% damage boost is very, very nice. Noise Dampener rounds out the build for the increased art damage ratio so those can, those can do as much damage as possible. You may consider something like Crimson Headband if you want to buff his crit rate, but otherwise don't bother since he has a low crit chance overall. For pouch setup, Mikhail likes drinks, so Victory Smoothie is an excellent item for him to buff art recharge and party meter gain. And besides that, just art recharge on Morag is always going to be good, and it's very good for this weapon with the higher cooldowns. With all that done, let's take a look at how to use Mikhail practically. So first things first, we should probably fight Tyran and Titan Kerr at all. So you'll notice that Albatross Cut does more damage when an enemy has you aggroed, and Blackwing Dance will do more damage when you attack an enemy from the front. Those are both very easy things to do, and it makes Morag's arts against any enemy pretty powerful overall, and gives you a lot of additional damage even though you might not have any specific additives on your skill tree. Another thing Morag has, is, or Mikhail has, is the fact that he's Dark Element, so he's completely immune to Doom. So by walking all the way over here, I can save my allies from ever getting hit by Murder Ray, and I could just completely resist it entirely, which is always a nice benefit as well. And thanks to the fast specials, pretty decent arts and everything like that, you can get your level 3 up really fast. The only really slow art is the 2000 Wings, which I'm going to replace in the next fight, actually. Rex has some faster arts overall, but he doesn't have the potential for as much evasion as uh, Morag in general. And you also can't stack it with Mithra's Foresight, but you can stack it with Schultzman Auto Speed. So that's something you can do if you want to use Mikhail on Rex. Doesn't really matter. Works pretty well on both of them, I think. That block rate was a little weird time, but you know what? I end up getting level 3 special off, so Ultra Annihilation Flare doesn't end up destroying my allies, so not really a big deal. And after setting up a quick dark combo, we can just easily chain attack for the, the easy win here. Don't really need a fusion combo, we don't even have any driver combos going right now because we're focusing on the evasion aspect of Mikhail, but we're pretty much fine on damage, not really going to be a major concern. Might not seem like it at first, but the second round will be plenty. Mikhail is one of those only bl those blades that only has one hit on all three of his uh, primary specials, so he's not a great blade for chain attacks, besides his level 2 being extremely fast, as you can see right here. But he's still pretty decent overall. You can set up orbs with him. can be very useful, which I... And, um... Yeah, I think Mikhail's a pretty good blade. He was able to keep aggro pretty effectively in that fight over Mithra and Dagas, who both typically have pretty high amounts of damage. And now, 
To show up a more general evasive build, let's try it against uh, Malos and Jin. I think Mikhail has a history with these two, so it's pretty fitting. So this is interesting just because um, there's two enemies and they have a lot of really annoying disruption abilities, but Mikhail can just dodge all of them and I just kind of wanted to show that off. There's also a point where Malos is going to use his uh, Mato armor, which is going to um, stop us for a little while from uh, really doing any damage of note. That's not really a big deal. So there's Monado Armor, not really a huge deal, just gonna cut our damage for a little while more than anything else. So I replaced that uh, one art I had on Morag with the healing art. Mikhail has a healing art on both Nia and um, Morag that no one else has. So by using Mikhail on Morag, you can actually get a healing art as well and both function as a non-unhittable tank who has a lot of damage and also have a healing art just in case you need to heal your allies at the same time. So in like a fight where there's a lot of AoE like this one, you can function effectively as a healer despite being a tank while doing a lot of damage and while doing everything possible to tank and evade every single attack. It's really, it's really, really good. He can, Macau can effectively function as all three roles of the party in one as far as damage, tanking, and even healing. He's not going to be the greatest at either one of these three, but he's still really, really good overall. Now that Manalus' Monado armor is gone, we can just kind of finish him off here, not too bad. Unfortunately, if he was not Dark Element, I'd be doing more damage to him, since Mikhail is also Dark Element. We're not doing quite as much as I would like, but not really a huge deal at the same time. Get a decent amount of damage there. And, um, yeah, it's just about uh, finishing them off, doing what you can there. Jin uses Demon Cloak, I get the debuff cancel, so I target Malos again, just decide to chain attack so I can finish him off. There is this orb here, but we can kill him in just a couple attacks here, so I don't really need to worry about um, anything like that. We can just uh, finish him off with Mithra and Dagas, and then I can just end the, the chain attack next round without having to uh, hit the QTE. I can just use one of my, my katanas and let them finish the chain attack off, so I don't have to do another round entirely. So, Very awesome slow special from the katana there. Jin, um, Malos goes down, so we're just left with Jin. So I swap to Jin, and, uh, I swap back to Mikhail, I mean. And we can just finish him off pretty easily here. Mikhail's level 3, does a lot of damage, we've got aggro, so we should get the bonus damage from that. Get, uh, 154,000 damage crit, not too bad. I use Mithra's, um, Ray of Light here to try to finish him off, but he ends up evading, so I don't get the, as much damage as I would have liked, but he's still gonna die at this point, so. That's just kind of an easy battle where you can see Mikhail's evasive capabilities, and to take that to another extreme, I want to show off, um, the, uh, Elma challenge now, because this is a good example of showing off the blowdown capabilities, so... If you don't have aggro on Mikhail and some of the Elma, or even if the, you do have aggro, some of Elma's AoE attacks with the Ghost especially can hit your allies and they might be blown down from that, which can actually be pretty cool. Along with the fact that Mikhail's Dark Element has a lot of evasion, he can basically tank all of their attacks, and then from there, you can set up seal reinforcements so they can't summon more ghosts, and you also have a healing art so you can heal your party members at the same time. And if any AoE attacks start to be dangerous to them, you have that blowdown chance as well. So Mikhail actually ends up being a very good blade against Elma. I'm not going to show the full fight just because I don't want to just be here forever, but... I think Mikhail actually has a really solid toolkit to deal with Elma. Probably the second best after Corvin. Just because of the seal reinforcements, the healing art, the really high evasion, and, and the fact that you can blow down to your allies if they get hit. It's just a really solid kit overall, which is uh, pretty, pretty powerful, I think. Like I said, I didn't want to show off that full fight, and I don't really want to show off this full fight either, given how long the video already is. So I'm just going to show off kind of the ending of it. just want to show off how AoE and chain attacks can work out decently well against the Gladiator, Orion, and Skyfist Remington if you want to use them there. And how Mikhail's evasion is very useful in a fight like this as well if you have Mithra as an ally. All around, evasion is very good. I think I've said this in a bunch of previous videos, but being able to basically only get hit 3% of the time because you're stacking up evasion is very, very good. It's probably one of the most broken strategies that you can possibly do, and Mikhail is a perfect example of that. The fact that he can heal and has really strong damage on top of that is really just the icing on the cake. He's just really a fantastic blade overall, and uh, I have a high opinion of him. Like I said, I think he's probably one of the best tanks in the game, probably top three at least behind maybe Bridget and uh, Corvin. 
probably very close to Bridget overall, I would say. So yeah, Mikhail, very good. I don't really know what else to say about him. You know how good Evasion is in this game. Only means can only have like a 3% chance to hit you. So yeah, Mikhail is really, really good because of that. And with that, we only have one more guide left to go before we're finally done with this series. So I hope you guys will look forward to that tomorrow. Yeah, I hope you learned something from watching this video as well. And if you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And help me out any other way you can, like buying merch, following me on Twitter, joining my Discord, and all of that good stuff. And enjoy Mikhail dancing. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a wonderful and blessed day. Look forward to all of my future content after these Blade Guides, and I will see you soon.